This is Bruce Lane, ANA State Government Affairs staff. Uh, during the COVID crisis, we've seen many states improve the working conditions for CRNAs by expanding scope of practice or removing supervision requirements or expanding prescriptive authority, just as some examples. What I'm frequently hearing from members at this time is sort of the question of how do we take these temporary changes and make them permanent? If a governor can issue an order to temporarily remove these barriers, how do we get them to sign an order that makes these changes permanent? Uh, there have definitely been some temporary changes we've seen that could easily be made permanent. For example, when CMS temporarily suspended the CRNA supervision opt-out language, CMS could potentially choose to permanently suspend the rule. It was CMS's rule to begin with, so they could always change it. They've always had the right to change it, whether it's temporary or permanently. At the state level, however, things work a little differently. When a governor temporarily suspends supervision language, just as an example, uh, if they temporarily suspend that with an executive order, the governor can only do that because a state of emergency exists. Normally, governors can't just change the law by executive order. So we can't just go to the governor and say, well, you made a good temporary change, now please make it permanent. Uh, the separation powers doctrine makes this impossible. If something is in state statute, only the legislature can permanently change it. If something's a regulation, only the regulatory body who created the regulation, such as the Board of Nursing, can change it. But when we say we want to take the temporary changes we've seen and make them permanent, what that means is that we're going to have to take these changes either to the legislature or the re relevant boards, like the Board of Nursing, and ask them to enact permanent changes that reflect what the governor was able to do temporarily. And that's basically the type of lobbying that your ANA and your state associations do normally. Uh, the temporary state of emergency doesn't change the things we need to do to make permanent changes to the law. We're still going to have to take it to the legislature, and we're still going to take it to these boards, and try to explain our, our positions to them, just as we've always done in the past. Uh, what sort of issues would we be lobbying on after this crisis? Um, again, we, we, the various things we've seen, the, the improvements we've seen temporarily, these are the things we're gonna bring, wanna bring to the states, but it will change, vary from state to state. So take supervision for an example. Would we lobby to remove supervision in every state? And the answer is not necessarily. Uh, we had a fair number of states that didn't have supervision language even before the crisis. So it wouldn't make sense to lobby these states on that issue afterwards. Uh, we also have some states where there's supervision requirement, but the governor never removed it even temporarily during this time. So if a state wasn't willing to change the requirement, even during a national emergency, we have to assume that they're going to be resistant to changing it once things get back to normal. The states we'd want to consider lobbying on the issues are the ones in the middle, the ones that normally have a requirement, but we're willing to suspend it during the COVID crisis. Those are the ones that are going to be really the, the primary targets for us. And that's just one example. It's going to be similar with other issues like prescriptive authority or, or, or other scope of practice issues. Um, states were all over the spectrum on these areas before, and they reacted a variety of different ways during the crisis. So how we approach the states afterwards is going to vary. The point is there's no one-size-fits-all approach in determining what we're going to lobby for moving forward. As always, each state has its own unique challenges and opportunities. Your AANA staff is working with the state association leadership to determine what the priorities and opportunities are for each state, but it's going to be different from state to state. So what does change as a result of this crisis? Well, what changes is the message that we're able to share with policymakers regarding CRNAs and how you practice. When there was a crisis, the CRNA community stepped up. When there were states that removed barriers to practice, CRNAs acted responsibly and used that, used that expanded ability to practice in a safe, effective way and you were able to provide better care to your patients. And you gave flexibility to the healthcare system, to the hospitals, to the facilities. And when there's an acute crisis in healthcare, lawmakers understood that CRNAs were an important part of the solution. They understood that the legal barriers that exist to limit CRNA practice prevented patients from getting the care they needed. So even after this crisis fades, there's still problems with the healthcare system. There were problems with the healthcare system before this popped up. There's going to be problems with the healthcare system afterwards. And we need lawmakers to understand that CRNAs are still part of the solution to the long-term problems we have with the healthcare system. If lawmakers can understand how you alleviated problems during the COVID crisis, we need them to understand how you can alleviate problems even when things start to return to normal. But we have those, we have those stories now. We have those examples. We can take that to the lawmakers and hopefully this is going to be persuasive in, in trying to make change permanent. So in short, we can't just take the temporary measures that we've enacted during the crisis and ask governors to make them permanent with a swipe of the pen. We're going to need to do old-fashioned lobbying to get that done, and the opportunities we'll have are going to be different for each state. But we do have positive experiences and positive messages that we can take from this that hopefully policymakers will listen to as we move forward. 
Uh, and if you feel like you're interested in playing a role in this, the best thing you can do is get involved with your state or national association. Um, as always, the state associations are on the front lines for lobbying on these issues, and they can always use people who are interested and are committed uh, as part of their efforts on that. So we encourage you to get involved with state or national association because there's going to be very good opportunities for us moving forward, and we hope that you as CRNA community will play a role in that.